All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. The hashtag we're using is Daybreak. You can tweet at Trevor Mbija, Tuwahiga Mwaura, mm -hmm. Zinzi K. And also you can text 224222. You can also call 0719 The discussion we're having on bulls and bears is investment and fraud. But for now, we're still talking about the headlines in the newspapers and everything that's going on mm -hmm. around you. Carol Maina Mwangi is still with us, advocate of the High Court, and Tony Watim, an economist as well. Mm -hmm. We'll get in more guests for the bulls and bears sessions. But for now, Carol, I want to bring your attention to page two of the Daily Nation. Mm -hmm. So now there's a man who wants to note that's a DCI boss and mm -hmm. IG jailed mm -hmm. for defying a court order. So the Director of Criminal Investigations ahead, George Kinauti and Inspector General of Police Joseph Poinet risk prison terms for defying orders on the use of suspects' photos on social media. Mm -hmm. There was a ruling on this by the court not to use the photos at least until the case is hard and determined. Mm -hmm. How effective are court orders? Because we've seen court orders being defied left, right and center. Or how effective should they be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> court orders yeah. are sacrosanct. Let's agree. Court Almost orders, religious. absolutely. And as we know, there, there is no sacred cow when it comes to court orders. Yes. So court orders should be adhered to by all. The operative word here is should be. Um, so what is happening right now, it is wrong whichever way you look at it, because um, most recently, our Honorable Mary Chasang, the magistrate um, who's been charged, and not found guilty, but charged with um, murder of her husband, of her, late, of her husband, of her late husband, her deceased husband. So by putting up her picture, putting her mobile number, um, putting up her ID number, you know, persons in committee, as we know, work overtime. You're, you're displaying person's information, which can then be used adversely against the person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in this respect, in this respect, um, Mr. Mr. Kinoti is on the wrong. But as we're discussing with yourselves, who's going to be brave enough to go and arrest their boss? There's always the, there's room for citizen arrest, but will I go and arrest? Will you go and you arrest? Can't you, can't, you, you can't access him. So as much as we know that it's, it's, it's not being adhered to, and there's currently, it's currently in court right now, um, if, if we're going to apply the law, let's not apply it selectively, right? What is the, what is the objective of them putting suspects' pictures? What are they trying to achieve? Mm. Is this, um, you know, cartoon to social media to show, you know, we're doing something? When we used to see this, is the mugshots, you know, the mugshots of suspects arrested in the US. So you have all these mugshots. But um, when we started doing mugshots here and then putting in someone's details, that's um, infringing on their rights. Right. Yeah. Tony, do you think they are effective? <laughs> yeah. I know you're not exactly part of the jury. Uh, <laughs> my opinion is that you, uh, in no. this country we, we, we are lacking behind in trying to protect personal information, personal yeah. data. Mm. And so we're infringing on every rights of privacy of individuals. Mm. And one of the main things in a techno-savvy world, uh, we need to understand that we need to protect personal data of people, even if you're a suspect. Yeah. Yeah. Short yet sweet. Straight. Mm. All right. Well, Tony, I want to engage you on uh, from page seven of the standard. That's where we can head to right now. Yes. Kirinyaga sets up coffee shop in the U.S. In the U.S. Okay. Yes. Kirinyaga Governor Anwa Igoro has announced their plans, and of course, the devolution conference is going on in her county mm -hmm. to start selling coffee directly to the American market. Mm -hmm. She said her government has struck a deal with a New York-based firm that will directly source the commodity from farmers flying out up to four tons per week. Now, the direct sales are expected to fetch an average of about, what, 120 shillings per kilogram. Mm -hmm. yes. Game changer or just a drop in the ocean? <laughs> Is this uh, how counties should be thinking? Exactly. Absolutely. That's my point. Uh, Counties should be thinking because Kirinyaga is, a, is an agricultural county. You talk about, when you read down there, it talks about the leading uh, producer of rice. Mm. So for counties, you need to find your competitive advantage. Mm. And then how do you scale up your competitive advantage uh, rather than looking at what compet competing with other. So you find that agricultural counties will want to compete with Mombasa in terms of tourism and all those kind of things. That's the wrong approach to go. Uh, I think uh, Governor Anwai Guru has found the right policy for her invest in agriculture, that's the best way that you can scale up and improve standards of living within that county. So for this, where uh, they've set up a coffee shop, uh, the coffee market is quite uh, complicated, eh? but uh, in terms of logistics and all those kind of things. I think this is one of the ways that it sets a precedence on how do we uh, overlap the current system that we have in the international market. So this is a precedence that we can try to build upon and then we see how do we scale up more people to come in on board. But there will always be those people complaining that uh -huh. when you start taking out the markets to the other places, we mm -hmm. lose the 
internal workings of the marketing system. They say that it's giving it's disadvantageous to most of the people because there'll be cartels in between here. Uh, okay. that, that has always been the argument. <laughs> there'll be too many cartels and then our yeah. revenue will, you'll deny us our uh, revenue. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think it's an open market, what, what Anwengur is trying to do. Uh, you're sourcing for investors who come and buy, so you're looking for a larger market. For, for any farmer, you will want to have access to a larger market. If you're trying to consolidate it within international, uh, locally, that's where you find more cartels. How the best way to find cartels when you want to fight cartels is you open the market to larger, broad mm. people of investors. Mm. So you're not in the hands of a few people who control you and determine the prices. So this is the best way, even if you're trying to talk about fighting cartels in the market, this is the best approach that we can take. Mm. So we need to look at how do we expand more people coming on board. Okay, Carol, when Trevor was asking that question, you look like you wanted to jump to it. <laughs> <laughs> give us your thoughts now um, you on see, this uh, model. My reading of this story is it's a two-pronged uh, two approach. Mm -hmm. She'll be flying up, no, not she. Um, the county has undertaken um, taking the product, the coffee, when it's, as it is raw, and then there's also talk of them processing it, right? As we know, value addition to any commodity is where the big money lies, right? Because when you just take out the coffee beans as they are, mm. and then you export them, and then it comes back as Nescafe, you've not really done much for your people. Mm -hmm. But if you then set up a processing plant, let's talk about how many jobs will be created there. What's the value of the uh, addition, the monetary value of the addition, and then selling that. And then the access to the greater market, the American, say New York, the, the Mar Starbucks, right? I know Starbucks does buy here, but... Um, the, so on some of their labels, you'll see made in Kenya or, or something yeah. in Kenya, yeah. Absolutely. Mm. So the access to that sort of market, and I believe it shall get to a stage where the Kirinyaga market uh, production shall not be able to um, suffice vis-a-vis -vis, um, demand. Yeah. So then other co uh, coffee producing belts, right? So talk about Kiambu. Then there should be collaborations, right? But as we know, what's happening in Kiambu right now is um, lots of coffee estates are being turned into housing estates, right? So that is really sad. But that was as a result of um, declining coffee prices. So what Governor Anwai Goro is doing is absolutely remarkable or what she's been able to do and I think that's what happens when you put a woman in power one quick one for both of you yes one of the big talking points of the devolution conference has been the difference of opinion between the president and the governors yeah. the president says use whatever you have properly mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, because as of now it's almost as if we don't see the need to add more to the counties if if the stories we're hearing mm -hmm. you know are anything to go by yes but the governors are saying we don't even have enough to run our own operations let alone develop our counties yes. who should blink first mm, do i go first yeah. <laughs> who should start first you. <laughs> okay so my opinion is uh, uh, that uh, the problem is with the county government mm. itself because the hundred percent, hundred percent. Because uh, the the PFM uh, Act uh, yeah. says that counties need to have thirty five percent of uh, the expenses on recurrent expenditure. Yeah. You're paying salaries. You're doing that. Yeah. Most of the counties are operating at seventy to eighty percent. So the way people structure the PFM Act is that seventy percent for you will go to development and other yeah. structures that you can help develop your county itself. Now. If you're having 80% of your recurrent expenditure, you have 20% for capital uh, investment. So it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So how should counties structure themselves uh, that you meet the PFA mark of 30%? You find that most of these go to salaries. Every governor that comes in employs people. Everyone that, uh, you see, there is huge workforce in countries. But isn't that what happens at the national yeah. government? <laughs> yes. Is that the same case? But the, the, law, the, the, law is clear that, uh, the law is clear that uh, for county governments, that's your threshold, 30%. So they've broken the law. Yes. So you need to understand that uh, if you're going to national government, there's also that threshold that you need to hold uh, national governments accountable. So on both scales, I think it will be wrong that we need to move more funds without functions. And first, they need to address the current problem they are in, that 80% of their funds go to recurrent expenditure. All right, Carol, very briefly. Um, very briefly, when the county is receiving resources, the allocation of resources is not done in a vacuum, yeah. right? Um, if it's not done in a vacuum, it's, uh, the, there's the index in which, you know, uh, that, that, that they use to allocate these resources. So the persons, the economists sitting behind this know what is necessary. So when you go and, I, I don't want to say misappropriate, but when you go and misallocate and you're going for benchmarking trips and then you're purchasing cars or even you, uh, uh, ballooning the employees, uh, the salaries and all, 
you know, it's not sustainable. I would like, sorry, if I could, uh, look at what um, uh, Governor Kibutha has been able to do in terms of um, uh, the mango factory he set up, his hospital, the hospitals there. If, if he was able to do that with the resources they yes. have, right, yes. then it can be duplicated across the other counties. Yes. We need to have um, forums where we can hold our governors accountable. I, I don't believe, um, with respect to Governor Waititu, giving alcoholics money <laughs> accounts as development. Development. Yeah. It's not. And the intention of devolution, and how it was structured. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is a topic right. I wish we had time yeah. for. Because uh, <laughs> I had some other thoughts from Monday. But we do need to take a short break. Okay. We're watching Daybreak Story. That's when we return. We'll give you a status update on the Go Slow, the downing of tools by workers at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Stay tuned for that. And of course, Bulls and Bears coming up in just a bit.